Hi, I'm Andy White. Um, this is BC Gone Line. We're here with Vicki Hollett. Vicki, thanks for having a chat with me. I'm delighted to be here. <laughs> um, I, there are a lot of things I could talk to you about. You're an author, you've done uh, webinars for, for BSIG, um, you've done loads of stuff over the years, and, and a speaker. I've seen uh, How to Speak American, and <laughs> it's hilarious, good stuff. Um, but actually what I'd like to talk about is the pre-conference event for Ayatafel in Glasgow. Last February we had a webinar which was about Elf and Belf, so English as a lingua franca mm -hmm. and business English as a lingua franca. And it was very popular. We had so many people in the room, we couldn't fit everyone in. Mm -hmm. Before you move on, okay. can you say what, what does that mean exactly, English as a lingua franca or business English as a lingua franca? Okay. Um, in many contexts where English is being used in the business world, um, it's just being used because it happens to be the default language that everybody knows. Mm -hmm. So you might have a German speaking to a Brazilian, speaking to a Thai, but they happen to be using English. Right. And there might be some English native speakers thrown in amongst the mix as well. But very often we're talking here about English just being used because it's the language everyone knows. Okay. And that webinar was very much about what is English as a lingua franca? What mm -hmm. is business English as a lingua franca? But now we're, we hope to move the discussion forward and consider, well, that's what it is, but what does it mean for us as classroom practice, practitioners, as business English teachers? What should we be doing to help our students have more successful conversations in those contexts? One of the speakers we've got coming is Alan Firth. And he did some very interesting research in the 80s. He's been studying business English as a lingua franca for a long time. And one of the things was, he was looking at it, and he looked at it in terms of second language acquisition. And he said, when I go to the second language acquisition um, research, here we hear how these people's English is imperfect, it's fossilised, it's, they're speaking into language, but when we actually look at what they're capable of doing, they're doing big deals really successfully. And so maybe it's not a question of looking at what they're doing wrong in terms of grammar and vocabulary, but thinking about it in terms of what are they doing right, and investigating that a bit more. Sometimes, actually, what you find is Yes, good grammar, good vocabulary, correct in the British or American sense of it is, is important. But sometimes that's not the most important thing. And it's the ability to arrive at a new understanding, a mutual understanding becomes more important. I see. So, so things like active listening skills and Very checking. Very important. Checking and clarifying, those sorts of things would be extremely important. It's extremely in important. And it raises big issues when it comes to how we assess our students. Mm -hmm. We can't judge them in terms necessarily of speaking English like a native speaker right. anymore. We have to judge them in terms of did they get their idea across to whoever their audience was. Right. Traditionally when we thought of English language teaching and the, what language we're teaching, we think of it in terms of, well, what variety? Is it British English, American English, Australian English? But here we're talking about a different kind of English, a context of using English. Probably it's not a variety, but it's a context in which English is used. And what does that mean for the, for the best way of using it? Okay. So that's what this pre-conference event is about. Yes. Um, and what was, the, what was the discussion in the webinar? Okay, in the webinar we were very lucky. We had Barbara Seidelhofer, who's mm -hmm. one of the world's foremost researchers, um, tuning in into ELF. Mm -hmm. And she's the leader of the VOICE project in Vienna, which stands for the Vienna Oxford English International, uh, the Vienna Oxford International Corpus of English. Okay. They've been looking at what what people say and recording what people say and looking at that corpus of English as it is spoken by non-native speakers and mm -hmm. there are native speakers in it too but all the language they've connected was um, English where it's being spoken as a, as a lingua franca mm -hmm. and we had her talking from the research angle we had practitioners like me we had Mark Powell there and lots of other people tuning in too. There's a lot to explore there, so I think we're going to have a lively discussion in Glasgow, and it's, it's, it won't be finished, I'm sure. We're it won't be finished. Know. I mean, I think the fun thing that we, we've got the possibility with a whole day to be talking about it is 
um, we can move the discussion forward. Yeah. So we can start thinking about well, what does this mean in terms of the activities I should be focusing on right. and doing that can really help my students become better communicators in this sort of context. Yes. Because I think for a lot of us, you know, our students are learning English, but it's not necessarily to speak to native English speakers. Exactly. They're learning English to talk to other people around the world. Right. Um, I, I will definitely be attending. That Great. Free, free